Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Thank you. Got you. Supervisor Riccio. Here. Here. Councilman McCarthy. Here. Councilman Wareheim. Here. Councilwoman Noack. Here. And Councilwoman Isarella. Here. Phones off. Yep. Okay, good evening. The first order of business is the town board to consider the zoning petition by Art Senior Living LLC for special exception in order to permit a 34,062 square foot two story assisted living facility for property located on the north side of Jericho Turnpike, 755 feet east of Kings Park Road in Comac. Um, somebody here for the applicant? Yes. Good evening. Is this working? Should be. Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Good evening, Supervisor, members of the board. Anthony Guardino, an attorney representing Artist Senior Living, uh, Virginia-based owner-operator of assisted living facilities um, that provides uh, essentially care to uh, uh, those residents who are memory impaired. Well. Push the Sorry. Is, it, uh, is that better? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. So the, uh, the artist uh, essentially provides care to uh, those who are memory impaired. Uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to just hand out some information. For them. Um, you know, Artis is uh, relatively new to this area, um, but they are uh, experienced developers and operators of assisted, li assisted living facilities. They have about 25 facilities that are either in operation or under construction nationwide. And again, they serve uh, seniors afflicted with uh, Alzheimer's and uh, other forms of dementia. Artis is the contract vendee of this property right now. Um, Property is located at 1131 Jericho Turnpike in Comac, and they need a special exception for the assisted living facility. That's why we're here today. Uh, I have Dale Koch uh, from Bowler Engineering to uh, go over the site plan if the board would like to uh, like me to to, uh, to like him to do that, and also Angelina Rotella from Artist Senior Living if there are any questions regarding the operation. The property is uh, a little uh, shy of two and a half acres in size. It's located on the north side of Jericho Turnpike, about uh, 800 feet east of Kings Park Road. You have the book there. You can see the relative location. There's a tax map and an aerial photograph. Uh, shows where the site is located. The property is currently vacant, but it had been the site of, um, and I'm dating myself, it was, the, I guess, years ago, the Uncle Henry's Smorgasbord restaurant, and then before that, in the 1960s, it was the Indian Ed restaurant, which I also remember. Um, and there's some photos in, the, uh, in your booklet, <clears throat> and there's a survey of the property. The property is split zoned, and that presents one of the, uh, the obstacles for us. Um, it has uh, the, front, the front 295 feet are zoned uh, WSI, and the rear 53 feet are zoned R10 residential. But both districts allow the assisted living facility use with a special permit from this board. Um, the surrounding properties, I, I know you're very familiar with the, uh, with the area. Um, you know, it is an area that kind of development has skipped over. You know, the development comes down to about Northgate, and then there are a few lots there where there's not a whole heck of a lot that has gone on in the last 30 or 40 years, and then development starts to pick up again. Um, you have uh, to the east, Hart Roofing and a limousine rental company, and then to the west is a vacant lot, and then, you, then there's the uh, expansion or, of Northgate from years ago. Uh, to the north, you have a residential uh, community. And then uh, to the south, across the street, you have the Courtesy Inn Motel and Tudor Time Daycare. Artis is seeking to construct, as you mentioned before, Mr. Supervisor, about 35,000, uh, 34,000 square foot, 64 unit senior living community. Um, I would point out as uses go uh, on Jericho Turnpike, this will probably be a among the most benign. The use is fairly quiet. 
uh, generates hardly any traffic since all of the residents are memory impaired. They do not drive. So the only traffic that is in and out is really related to the staff. And they come and go during the shifts. Um, the facility will be an attractively designed building. It's two stories in height. Uh, there will be ample parking and uh, there will be significant amounts of open space. And you see the color uh, site plan, which is up here to my left, and it's in your book at Exhibit 8. And then there are some elevations of the proposed building, which are on the cover of the book and also in the booklet at Exhibit 9. Uh, the site plan was designed uh, with a lot of back and forth, a lot of consultation, helpful consultation by, uh, from the planning uh, staff at the town. Um, the site, unfortunately, though, is not, well, like many sites in Smithtown, not served by sewers. So there is a sewage treatment plant that is being proposed in the rear of the building. The treatment plant will exceed, or will meet or exceed all of the health department's setback requirements for such facilities. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, the, uh, the facility is permitted with the special exception. However, this board has to make certain findings for an assisted living to, uh, to be permitted. The f there are uh, four, essentially four criteria. Uh, the first is that the site not be less than five acres and have 300 feet of frontage. We do not have the five acres. <coughs> so that's, uh, that's the, uh, the first uh, nonconformity. And then the second one is that all principal and accessory buildings must be set back uh, from all land being either used for residential purposes or residentially zoned um, at least 100 feet. And of course, we've got the split zone line, so that creates a problem for us because that's residentially zoned property. Um, so we don't comply there. The total building area uh, cannot exceed 25%. We are about 18.5%, so we do meet that one. And the building height we also meet. The maximum is 35 feet, and we meet that. The town code does provide a requirement, uh, does provide a, a, a section that says that the requirement for five acres can be modified by this board uh, upon two findings. One is that there be a public benefit, and the second is that the location of the facility be within or adjacent to a central business district and within walking distance of stores and related uses. Now, um, clearly there's a public benefit here. These types of uses are needed. The comprehensive plan of the town recognizes that, that the town needs housing for the elderly and we do not have uh, uh, many, uh, many facilities here. Um, but I would also point out that the project is within walking distance of some shopping, uh, Mayfair Shopping Center and, and more importantly Northgate, which is almost right next door. And those two shopping centers effectively serve as the central business district of Comac. There is no central business district. Now, um, I, I think the whole point of that, though, is kind of lost on this use because these people are memory impaired. It doesn't matter that you can walk to shopping because they're not going to walk to shopping. The facility is, is fenced in. It's secure so people can't wander. So the requirement for the you know, proximity to shopping may work for some assisted living facilities where there's more independent living, but this is not one of them. How many residents did you say? It's 64, 64 beds. Um, because of the, the, because the, the, the uh, proposal doesn't meet the lot area or the setback, we did actually go to the zoning board back in February and we made requests for relief from those two requirements. Uh, there was a public hearing held in February uh, the board has reserved decision uh, pending a secret determination and, of course, pending a decision by this board. They're not going to decide it until this board makes a decision on the special uh, use permit. Um, with respect to the setback requirement, um, I want to point out that the sewage treatment plant, um, again, is only going to be set back 21.8 feet from the imaginary line that's drawn on the property, but it's actually 75 feet from the property line. So if I can just approach here. This distance here is 21.8. This is an imaginary line that goes through the property, but actually this is 75 feet. So it's greater than it appears. It appears like we're very deficient, but we're really not. But what I want to point out, and I think it's very important, and I'll hand this up, is that this sewage treatment plant, they're, they're, most of the facility is below ground. So it's not like you have a big block building that people will see. The only thing that you will see is a small shed-like structure, and I'm going to hand this up, 
which is about 10 by 10. It's a single story. It's very small. It has the equipment inside. And then the other part of the facility is actually flush to the ground. <laughs> so while there's a setback issue, it's not something that people are really going to see. It's not very large. So if I could hand this up, maybe you can pass this down to Councilor Manoak. That would be great. Thank you. So that's the extent of that, of that facility that, that requires the setback variance. The only other variance that we asked for the, from the zoning board was uh, for uh, the required minimum lot uh, landscaping. Uh, we are at about 7%. The code requires 8%, so we're slightly deficient just on the landscaping. We meet all the buffer requirements. Um, I do want to mention there were some neighbor concerns at the zoning board. Um, I think there are some neighbors here today. Um, several of the neighbors and their attorney raised concerns about the appearance of the sewage treatment plant. There was some, uh, well, it was a, unknown because we just showed a box on a plan. People said, What's, what does that look like? So we did provide to their attorney uh, photographs of what I just handed up so that they could see that it's a very, very small building and then the remainder of the facilities are actually flush with the, with the ground. Um, also, there was a concern about the location of the, the uh, refuse uh, enclosure, the dumpster, which was originally proposed to be in the back here. And that was, the neighbors were concerned about that because it was close to their property. So what we did is we relocated the dumpster all the way to the front. We have plenty of room, we have plenty of parking. Uh, so that was, a, that was an, easy, uh, an easy modification. Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, I just want to point out, I'm sure the board is aware of the, uh, the planning department's memorandum that was issued a couple of days ago on May 17th. Um, and in that memorandum, uh, the staff recommended that the town board approve the special exception if the zoning board grants the necessary variances and the town board issues a negative secret uh, declaration. Um, the memo concludes that the proposal complies with all 13 of the general criteria for special exception uses and two of the four special criteria for assisted living facilities. Um, and the memo also found that with respect to the two deficiencies, the two criteria that we don't meet, uh, minimum lot area and setback, these, variants, uh, in, these variances in the staff's mind are likely to be granted according to the memo. With respect to lot area, the staff pointed out that the use is not intensive as I started with. The floor area is actually proportional to the site, so we don't meet the five acres, but it's a smaller facility, so it's not, it's not like it's stuffed onto the property. It's actually uh, commensurate in size. Um, the department also noted that the plot area is sufficient because it is, in fact, large enough to meet the required parking, the setback, and the buffers. So it actually works. It just doesn't meet the five-acre requirement. And then with respect to setback, the department noted that the principal building is actually set back the required 100 feet. So the main building actually meets the requirement. It's just that small food treatment plant and underground facility um, that requires the, uh, the variances. Um, So at this time, that concludes my presentation. Um, I don't know if the board has any questions or if you'd like to hear from the site plan. How many staff will you have? Excuse me? How, I, how many staff? Well, the staff is, um, it depends on the shift. There are three shifts. There's seven to three, which is the most popular shift. There would be 18 employees. And then the second, which I guess is three to 11, it goes down to 11. And then the overnight would be six. So, so there's always parking, somebody there. The parking area is for the employees. Essentially, and we have 48 parking spaces, and you know it, we're we're well we're way over parked. Originally, we had come in with asking for a variance, and uh, then we we realized we could actually, you know, meet the parking requirement. So we made the change. There might be a thought to land bank some of those spaces <laughs> if the board wants us to do that, but uh, um, you know that's up to the town. But we have plenty of parking. Okay. Would you like to hear from the engineer, or do you think you well, have it? We can wait on him. We'll okay. Uh, there might be questions relative to the Sure, issue. that's fine. Uh, Marsha Kleinman. Did I say it right? Kleeman, sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Our main concern, there's 42 units in our development. Our main concern happens to be the sewer treatment. Where it is located, it's 
right up where I live and quite a few other people live. They tell us that you're not going to smell or do or hear anything, but you are. Because you go, and I spoke to people who used to live near there. Two homeowners already put their places up for sale. Of course, one of them lived near one, and the odor comes out. When you clean it out, you're going to smell it. And who wants to live like that? Well, I don't want to uh, calm your fears about that. We have sewage treatment plants all over town. I can't hear you. We have sewage treatment plants all over Smithtown. They're necessary because we don't have sewers. I never get a complaint about uh, sewage okay, treatment Okay, well, plants. we had one gentleman that lived near one, and he said when they came to clean it out, you, it's just like cleaning out a sewer. You're going to smell it when you put the hoses in. I never heard of I that, mean, but that's okay. You know, we're paying taxes, and our taxes are a lot. Okay. So you're opposed to this application? Uh, well, yes, the whole community is. Okay. Anyone else wish to be heard on this matter? Okay. Any uh, board members have any questions? No. I'll move to close the hearing. Second. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilwoman Isabel? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next public hearing for the town board to consider proposed amendments to Chapter 322 of the code entitled zoning. Good evening, Supervisor Vecchio, members of the town board. My name is David Flynn. The, I'm the town planning director. The purpose of the public hearing is to get input on a proposal recommended by the planning department for the town board to amend the zoning ordinance to change a chart having to do with the maximum floor area that's permitted on a lot when the lot's lo located in the local waterfront area. About a month and a half ago, the town board amended the zoning ordinance at the planning department's recommendation to uh, modify the restrictions to ease them up a little bit for the same floor area ratio in certain zoning districts in the town generally. At this point, we're recommending that the portion that's in the waterfront be changed to be consistent with the change that the town board approved uh, or amended about a month and a half ago. If you look at the chart that's in the public notice, and I believe I gave you a copy tonight, um, I don't mean to trivialize it, but it's almost like an IQ test to see the difference between the old and the new. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the proposed change is very small. Um, it, what it does is it makes the chart consistent with the other chart that has to do with the zoning district. So I, I think this is a minor change. Um, if you have any questions, I'm so here to answer them. The change is to adapt to the LWRP? No, it's not to uh, ad adapt to it. It's that when we recommended that the town board amend the zoning ordinance a couple of months ago, right. it was a generic change to the R10 and the RM7 district to change the maximum floor area from 25% to 30 and 35. In the LWRP, that still holds in terms of a zoning district, but not in terms of the lot area. They're two different things. Zoning district's one thing, lot area is something else. So to try to make the second factor the same as the first, we're recommending this change. So there's no, to minimize confusion for someone that, if we don't make it the same, if you don't make it the same, there are four possibilities that you either have a piece of property that's in one, in both, in the second one, or in the first one. There are, there are four possibilities, and there's more chance for something to go wrong. And uh, at least it's in my opinion, I'd rather have the two parts of the ordinance consistent with each other. Thank you. Anybody wish to be heard on this? I'll move to close the hearing. Thank you. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Okay, we'll continue on. Supervisor appoints Kenneth K. 
Cateria, the Youth Advisory Board, for the term listed here. We have uh, third readings for the following. Parade Run Walk for Comac High School Homecoming Parade. Special event for the next concert, Chamber of Commerce. A special event for the King Park Chamber of Commerce Music Concert. A special event for the Long Island Green Market Weekly Farmers Market. A Parade Run Walk for the Greater Long Island Running Club Training Run. The next two will be for uh, a special event at St. Philip and James. That's a second reading. A Parade Run Walk for the Comac Volunteer Ambulance Corps. That's a first reading. Anyone wants to be heard for or against the granting of those permits? If not, we'll move on. Tommy. Building Department Report of April 2016. And advertise for public hearing. I have number one, a town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for public hearing to be held at the Eugene County Tarot Senior Citizen Center, 420 Middle Country Road, Smithtown, New York, on the 23rd day of June 2016 at 7 p.m. to consider zoning petition 2015 11 to change the zone from R10 to NB for property located in the northeast corner of New Highway and Comac Road, R10 District, and R10. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I am number two, the town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise a public hearing to be held at the Eugene A. County Tower Senior Citizen Center, 420 Middle Country Road, Smithtown, New York, on the 23rd day of June, 2016, at 7 p.m. Consider zoning petition 2015 14 by CarMax Auto Superstar to change the zone from LINR 10 to WSI in order to permit the construction of a motor vehicle showroom for the property located in the northwest corner of Middle Country Road, Montclair Avenue, St. James. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Warheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? <coughs> yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. I have number three, a town clerk to advertise a public hearing to be told of town. Smithtown Town Hall, Patrick R. Vecchio Building, Vicky T. List Boardroom, 90 West Main Street, Smithtown, New York, 11787, on June 7, 2016, at 2 p.m., to consider amending Chapter 322 of the Code of the Town of Smithtown entitled Nonconforming Structures. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Minutes approval, Town Board to approve April 21, 2016. At 7 p.m. minutes, item number two, the town board to approve the following. A, purchase of printed sweatshirts. B, extension of agreement with Hendrick Company. C, Donald Mustner, Catherine Corr, Paul Rubino to attend New York State Government Finance Officers Association. D, member of the town's investment policy. E, town clerk to issue a special event permit to the Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce. Town clerk to issue a special event permit to the Kings Park Chamber of Commerce. G, pursuant to public hearing held by town board on May 3rd, 2 p.m. town hall. Enter onto certain real property located at 943 Middle Country Road, St. James for remediation and or removing of structures. H, town clerk to issue a parade run walk, Greater Long Island Running Club. I, parade run walk, Comac High School. J, rescission of resolution 2016-014. Commencement, so commencement of legal, legal action of the town attorney's office against Foxy's on the beach. L, extension of bid 14-108 for plow blades and cutting edges. M, the Conservation Board to utilize services of Alliance Reporting Services. N, Superintendent of Highways enter into agreement with local fire, water, school districts and villages for perform maintenance and work in snow removal and supply materials. O, rejection of bids received April 7, 2016 in conjunction with bid number 16-027 for full road, depth road reclamation. P, Animal Shelter in Kind Donation Policy, Supervisor Vecchio of Appointment of Catherine Catea of the Youth Environment Review Board, and R, Town Clerk Issues Parade Railroad Permit for a Green Market Inc. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Item number three, a town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for the following bids to return to Town Hall 99 West Main Streets on the dates indicated. Bid number 15-053, refuse remediation from certain private properties, June 9, 2016. Bid number 15-058, full depth reclamation of various town roads, returnable June 9, 2016. C, bid number 16-054, demolition of structures of private properties, returnable June 9, 2016. 
Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vick? Yes. <coughs> before the town board, the authorized town clerk to advertise for the following. A request for a proposal to return to town of Smithtown Purchasing Department, 65 Maple Avenue, Smithtown, New York, until 4 p.m. on June 16, 2016. RFP number 16-050, Maintenance and Repair of Physical Systems. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchi? Yes. Number five, the town board to award the following bids and authorize the purchase of the associated goods and services as per five A, B, C, D, and E. Bid number for polyethylene bags, the Unipack Corp, printed sweatshirts and jackets to woods, men's and boys. Bid for masonry items to state material, Elm Transit Mix. Bid for athletic field marking painting to Elmont Paint. And final bid, final award of bid number 16-011 for asphalt concrete to Pacific Coal <coughs> Materials, Asphalt Supply of Long Island, and Premier Asphalt, as all per the printed agenda. Councilwoman Nizarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Becky? Yes. Item number six, LWRP, 6 A and B, the town board to issue a written consistency determination. Pursuant to chapter 151 of the town code, is consistent with LWRP subject conditions I number 2014-06 and issue a written consistent determination chapter 151 the code for application 2016-03. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchi? Yes. I have number seven, the town board authorized the acceptance of the <coughs> following as per seven A, B, C, D, and E. Acceptance of a donation, escrow a donation, a bank check, and acceptance of a People's United bank check. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchi? Yes. I had number eight, the town board to authorize the controller to execute the following per 8A through L. These are transfers and increase in revenue codes or per the printed agenda. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchi? Yes. Town Board authorized supervisors to execute the following and form approved by the Town Attorney as 9A through G, satisfaction of mortgage, special services agreement, an extension of agreement with New York State Department of Transportation, extension of agreement with New York State Department of Transportation for federal aid project, supervisor to enter and maintain memorandum of understa understanding with the SEG Administration Guild, software license for 3M, and for web-based GIS sign management system, and G, agreement with Cataldo Grasso Architects for Professional Design Services for the interior alterations at the Senior Citizen Center. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. On the personnel of the town board to approve the following personnel matters as per the printed agenda A through R. Seasonal appointments, a promotion part-time, seasonal salary changes, part-time appointments, salary, and title change, seasonal appointments, acceptance of volunteer service, seasonal appointments, or put a print to the agenda. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I uh, have one read on resolution ID number 11748. It's a grant for, from Downtown Revitalization Initiative, authorize the town planning director to apply for funding from the Downtown Revitalization Initiative and to further authorize supervisor to sign any all documents necessary to make the said application <coughs> and administer the program if said funding is awarded on a form approved by the town attorney. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Okay, that concludes the resolutions. Mr. John Bellotti. I'm here in reference to the bid number 16027, which you just uh, rejected. I'm with Rosemar Contracting. We were the low bidder on the on the project. I'm a resident of Smithtown also. Um, we were told two weeks ago via the purchasing department that we were going to be awarded the job. Um, I've been told that we were recommended to be awarded the job. 
Uh, we didn't bother anybody in the town, figuring things would process the way they normally do. We work for basically every town on Long Island, um, in Suffolk County, and most of the towns in Nassau. Um, this, this afternoon, we saw on the website that this bid was going to be rejected, and uh, we, had give, we had been given no reason as to why it was going to happen. And we are a very reputable contractor. We do a lot of work for New York State DOT, Suffolk County, Brookhaven, Babylon, Islip, so on and so forth. Um, we manufacture our own oil. We manufacture our own asphalt. We're a very large contractor, whether you've heard mm -hmm. about us or not, and we're a reputable <coughs> contract. Uh, we submitted the lowest bid. Uh, the title of the job is road reclamation. There's two main items in the bid for road reclamation, which is the mix and place item and the oil item. Um, if you take our prices for those two items, match them up against any of the bidders, we're the low bidder. Uh, we were obviously over, low overall for the overall contract, so I would like to find out why we were not given some consideration or given some type of reasoning as to why our bid would have been dismissed. Well, could you just tell me again, one of the items is mix in place? Yes. And what's the second item? Uh, emol oil, I'm going to call it. It's called asphalt emulsion. And I'll just write that down. Okay. Um, we're going to have the town attorney answer your question. Uh, he, I didn't speak to the town attorney. I spoke to Fred. I guess who was the assistant town attorney. Yes, he's one of them. The deputy town attorney. Okay, um, he wasn't familiar with construction. He does more land acquisition, acquisition apparently, and he wasn't really sure what to do. He suggested I email all the board members, which we did, uh, to go ahead and ask that uh, this be um, uh, postponed, this resolution, because. Uh, he mentioned that the, there might have been some concerns. He wasn't quite sure exactly what they were. Uh, certainly, like I mentioned, we do, a, we do a lot of work throughout Suffolk County. We would want to sit down with anybody, any engineering, highway department, <coughs> town board, if, if they wanted to, to, to go over what problems or, or concerns they have on the project. But it really, what happened is we ended up, uh, this kind of came out of nowhere for us. We were told it was going to happen, that the contract was going to go forward, which we expected, and and like I said, two o'clock this afternoon, we found out it. Okay, it's not. Now, we are not attorneys here. We take advice from the town attorney and the purchasing agent, whether to accept the bid or reject it. This we all learned this at the last moment, so I'm sure we'll get the town attorney at some point to call you and give you the explanation as to why the bids were rejected. Okay. I don't have that answer. Right. Anybody ever see it? Okay. Right. Because may, I might have been in the business too long to, to, to know, sure. but it, the, the intent I always thought of bids were to go ahead and get the best prices for the towns and the taxpayers. Oh, that's true. And, and, and then get a reputable contractor that's going to perform the job, you know, within budget and on time and a, a timely schedule, well, which I, is I'll what. Make, I'll make an assumption that somebody saw something in that bid that kind of raised a red flag. I don't know what the red flag is. And so we were advised to reject all the bids as of today. Okay. Uh, and I guess what I'm saying is, if the, whatever concern it was, it would have been, we well, certainly would, would love to address any Well, I'm concern. going to try to get you an explanation tomorrow. Okay. Okay? Uh, so you call, and I'll see if we can get you an explanation as to why we rejected the bid. Okay, but, but essentially that... The vote that just occurred is no. That's vote. the end of it. Yes, and there, and there was also a new bid on that same agenda. I, I, yeah, but it, 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 well, you know, know it's, you know, know what it is. The, the the contractor puts his numbers out. Now they're yes, all public I know knowledge, that. I so know that. I everybody know that. beats my price by a penny. Mm -hmm. and, but you know. there's, I'm sure there's a legal reason why we were advised to do this. <laughs> now we could belabor it all night. Right, right, I right. I, right. I, I and, can't and, tell you any more than what I know. Right, and, and like I said, the, the intent I would thought would be for the town to get the best price, the well, jobs that we gave that. <coughs> just to end this discussion, right, first of all, I'm sure you're aware that the town has the right in any bid to reject all bids and rebid it, right? There was a concern as to a significant variation in the, un the unit price bids, so the recommendation from the town controller was that we rebid it. Right, what typically what happens in when there's variations and somebody's very low, 
they contractor doesn't want them to do that work item that they're very low on we did the job knowing you would go ahead and do the work with the low items it you know you you have the list of 15 items or so there whatever items they want to do that's that's what we intend to do to us it really doesn't matter you know so it would be better for the town to use a cheaper number you would think but you know not to be scared by it and like I said we manufacture our own materials so we certainly have an edge over a majority of contractors out there so so I wouldn't be you know it's contradictory to think that the town would be concerned about a low bid number and I'm telling you that no matter what item you use we it wasn't it wasn't exactly a low bid number it was the difference between the unit price bids difference between what the unit price bids on various items right well no what I meant right for a low bid number for a unit price for an individual item yes that that's what I'm saying is in ironically last year we were second on this bid and the item that they do the most the mix in place and the oil we as a second place bidder were cheaper than the low bidder was and but the town the highway department said they would evaluate it and they ended up awarding it to that where they didn't seem like they were concerned about getting the the lowest price for that item so but if if it alleviates any concerns it was not based on your firm or reputation or anything having to do with that the choice was made that we had some concerns so we have to write under the bid to reject all the bids and rebid it so that's what we elected to do and I guess what I'm saying if there's any concern with any of our prices we certainly fully intend to honor them all you know so we're not no matter what items you picked from our bid we want to do them well it wasn't necessarily you it was across the board with the different bids would that affect the low wouldn't you be concerned with the low bidder because we're the ones that would be doing the work and that we're doing you know as long as we can do all the items well that total number is based on the different unit prices my I might suggest mr. body yes perhaps you want to call in tomorrow afternoon rather than adjudicate it okay that might be the best thing to do his number is three six zero seven five seven zero. I will. He will be there. You can call him. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, we have uh, Ms. Yvonne Katz, please. Good evening, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, corporations at the help of Industrial Park not only violating zoning codes and ordinances, but the government is allowing. You want you want me to do it louder? Yeah. Corporations at the help of Industrial Park not only violating zoning codes and ordinances, but the government is allowing the use of noise generators to conceal this abuse receiving deceiving residents and disregarding the rights we are paying high salaries for police public safety government officials and administration on top we are also paying corporations taxes electricity and grants yet there is not one person to stop the abuse the disregard and disrespect to the rights of others by these corporations and by government officials the town supervisor recently at a Hapog Industrial Association meeting quoted President Roosevelt saying his job was to do what others tell him and that Terry Alessi had called, implying the president of the Hapog Industrial Association tells the supervisor what to do. The town supervisor's job is to represent all townspeople, regardless of political status. I am looking forward for the town to solve this problem. The problem that we're dealing with is, is really, uh, even though you might say not all the other people are not complaining about it, this is affecting my life. What is a noise generator? A noise generator, um, if you could go into the internet and check the website, website noisecom.com, their specialty is to, pr to create um, technology that does 
noise generators. And the technology can reach the advancement of satellite use, wireless radio frequencies that I can show you if you come to my house, if I, when, while this noise is going, if I go into my backyard and try to work in my yard, and I put the radio to block this no shading noise, I can't hear the radio because these frequencies are blocking radio frequencies. These are radio microwave frequencies that are being used. I don't know who, I don't know whether the town is allowing this, but it's been going on for too long and um, the board claims that I'm making it up. I am not making it up. I have over 80 videos on YouTube that demonstrate this abuse, and you can have them analyzed. Mrs. Katz, I want to end it. I would love to I, end I this, Mr. Baker. I how many Baker. hours of man hours that we've sent Prove it. our people. Prove it. Prove it, because I have instruments that okay. can prove it. Okay, don't go there, Mr. Vecchio, because that insults right. me and upsets, okay. upsets and makes me lose respect for you. No, please don't use respect for me. I will. I, I do I not will disrespect you all someone that who will lies be to, to me. Your Prove it with recordings like I have, like I am proving it to you. Don't, don't tell me I am lying. Well, Mr. McCarthy, do not tell Mr. Me I am lying. Mr. McCarthy ordered a new study, and that study is just Mr. Came McCarthy. In today. And I'm ex that's why I ended. I, I'm looking forward okay. for this problem to be solved. Okay. It's tremendous abuse. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move to close the meeting. Thank you. Supervisor Vecchio. Yes. Councilman McCarthy. Yes. Councilman Wareheim. Yes. Councilwoman Nowick. Yes. Councilwoman Anzarella. Yes. 